Hello and welcome once more to a new video from Sync Stories and I'm Chris and I will be talking about Krita and auto flatting today and I've recorded a couple of videos already on auto flatting with Krita but this is number this is, this is number two part two in this series and today we're actually going to concentrate on Krita and what I will be doing mostly in this video is uh, well mostly a uh, half of the video is dedicated to uh, changing the parameters in the filter that we're going to use because as you may have seen in part one I made a sort of out-of-the-box uh, conversion. I tried to do one which d didn't really work uh, super well. I mean it did work as planned but, but it created um, uh, a handful of color areas more than I wanted it to create. So by tweaking the parameters we will hopefully be able to uh, minimize that so um, so we don't get more work later on but we try to optimize everything already from the get-go all right so let's see uh, so I will I haven't tried this out uh, so I will do this online now here and I will start Krita double clicking now and the uh, startup screen is on the left now showing 4.2.5 that's the version and so what we will be doing here is that we will open the same document as we had last time I will open the Let's see, it is the this we did. Here. So I'm dragging in the PNG from my desktop and dropping it into here. So this was the this was the um, four X flats prep we did in part one of this video which then uh, resulted in a X flats done which looks like which looked like this now I mean in Photoshop so so the idea was that you see here uh, down here in the arms here for instance there are too many um, too many parts compared to here should be just one big area the whole arm the lower arm here the underarm should be just one color area here but it isn't so there's some tweaking to be done here so let's see if we can now fix the parameters in the filter and then regenerate this to to make a better result we want less colored areas so that it will be simpler for us to to actually do the real colors later on so i'm taking away this and let's concentrate on krita now and as I said, let's see which version do we have. We have 4.2.5, and I downloaded this uh, yesterday or the day before, so it's um, um, well, some and it's the beginning of September, so. All right. 
So now let's see what we can do with this. So the procedure then for those of you who want to do auto flats is to go up to the filter menu and then you want to start the G -mic QT. And we start that. And here is this and here of course you have a whole bunch of uh, filters that you may want to use for other purposes. So you can see how they turn out to the right there. And uh, but the one that we are interested for our um, for our flatting is this one, Colorized Line Arts Smart Coloring. So I'm dragging the window here so where we can easily see all the information here inside in the middle. And I am we're scrolling down here to show you that there are lots of parameters. So what I will be doing now is I'm going to take my old screen dump here from version uh, what, what, which version 2.2.0 this was when I first um, uh, found a way to get this actually to work so what I will be doing now is I will take this on my other monitor over here and I will increase it in size so that I can read my values and then there will be a little overlap here but I hope that doesn't disturb you too much okay so I'll move this over to the right here okay so now So the first, so we do have the colorized mode and that's okay, let, let it be like that. Uh, we have 95 in the contour detection, that's also okay. Um, one thing that I like to do is to increase the color saturation here. So you, you may do that if you want or but I usually have this at 194 okay and we have uh, minimal color intensity I usually take this down a little bit let's see if we take it down a, a, to little or no 87 is what I usually have it at 87 and then color shading should be zero but then we have this endpoint rate and exactly how all of this works uh, is a mystery to me but I've been I've been checking around here and I've been trying this quite substantially and my uh, my um, conclusion is simply that this must be 18.60 or something like that uh, it may work otherwise also I don't know but somehow or other I found this value here which I which worked for me okay and then the endpoint connectivity can be what it is and then we have the spline max length which I increased to 92.93 something like that 92 
42, well, something like that in the 92s. Okay, and then we have the segment max length. I leave it at 20. Same with the spline max angle to 90. The spline roundness I have at 105. That's probably not significant. And then we have um, allow self intersections, yes, minimal area, and the spline. Uh, spline uh, right, yeah. I guess that's it. And we have also active in place and first output, right. So that seems to be okay. Now the question is simply, the preview type here. So maybe we should just choose this and get rid of the... So this would be the preview then. And the funny thing is that this doesn't look like the version that the previous version of Krita. So there seems to be something that they have changed. So let's see if we can do this online. Let's fiddle around a little bit. And I think of course the 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 main points here is is the endpoint rate and maybe we should take it down yeah look at this there it is yeah it's the endpoint rate because I am sure that all my points are connected. So, so let's what happens if we do this. Eight, let's leave this at 1860 as we had. And then endpoint connectivity. Let's maximize out that. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, so let's leave that at two again. And the spline max length, let's minimize. Oh, there's also another one. But there's a color here. That shouldn't be there. Okay, I think this, so endpoint rate zero seems to be the new value. So let's try that out to see if it actually does work. Let's do the OK here. And now, as usual, Krita is doing this mad thing here that the new layer is not the new layer over here to the right. That uh, the new layer is the layer one. So if I remove this one, I will see the. So this is a very old bug here. 
from years ago. So it, it uh, renames the wrong layer. Uh, so but you can so what I do normal is just I uh, just remove uh, I'll just delete the the um, the top layer with shift delete and then I'll I'll, I'll see the th the X flats so here we have the X flats uh, image and of course we could have saved it we can just revert a little bit and we can maybe we can uh, I'm not so expert in if uh, where Krita is having all its so so let's let's just do this that we we simply save it we s save it as hmm. let's just redo it from scratch to illustrate the, the workflow because that's the important thing here that we get the workflow going. So okay, so four X flats. I'm dragging in the image, the PNG image. I'm going up in my filters menu, start GMIC QT. And if I'm only having this colorized line art filter is that if that's the only thing I'm doing in crit all, all day long then it always is saved so I, I don't have to actually choose it when I come into crit I just it goes automatically so I just press OK here and then I just shift delete and then I just save as control shift s and of course I'm running windows now so uh, and then I just save it as a Photoshop image and this is our third x lats now Right, so now we're done with Krita and we have we have this um, my files here so the xflats uh, PNG that we used is here and then our result number three here the version three so now I'm just double clicking that to come into Photoshop and then I'm also double clicking the document that we were working on last time in um, in the part one video so here you see the um, what we were doing last time we were just quickly doing some coloring and we were fixing things and um, and this time we don't have to fix things so much because we have the correct areas so what I'm doing now is just I'm selecting all and I'm copying and then I'm pasting the new color layer at the very bottom here under the line art and I'm quickly to rename this X flats I'm entering and I'm locking it immediately and then I'm pasting it again but this time I'm naming it colors right so I, let's see x flats 
version 3, right? Colors version 3. So if we go solo on this layer here now, so we see it's the same as we had. So I'm keeping Alt down and I'm clicking on the visibility icon here. And if I do it again, I'll reinstall all the other layers visibility as well. Anyway, so okay, so now we can just dismiss that. And so we're safely back in, in um, Photoshop. And the important thing here is that if we just take a quick look again at the X flats line art I prepared last time. You can see here that there's a difference between the X plus line art and the real line art that we are going to use for the panel. This is the real line art. Let's This is the real line art which I want to appear in the printed comic book. And this is the X flats line art that I sent to Krita. So I, I, I'm removing, and I'm talking about that also in the previous videos here, that I'm, I'm removing the um, motion lines, for instance. But then, so these motion lines here I have removed, but then I also have repaired, as you can see here, I have repaired the, the arm rest or the the uh, the chair here um, so that it will be colored and then comes the effect over it so the so the there will be some kind of effect um, um, like half visible so 50 percent visibility opacity right so this this is the so I, I want to color the whole arm the arm chair or whatever you can call it. Um, but I, I want to still make it a little transparent just under the motion lines. So we get so the motion lines are much more important than the the chair, the color of the chair, uh, and they are also in the foreground, so, so they stand out more. But we we still see the colors of the chair, as in the uh, final coloring I did here. You can see here that if we zoom in on on that, that you still see the color of the chair shining through. But here I didn't in this version I, I didn't um, make the, the like the fifty percent opacity uh, like a, I usually do that sometimes with a white I painted white inside here and I I um, moved down the opacity to to fifty or forty or thirty percent or something like that to get a get a a hint of motion so that it doesn't become too strong. I mean, um, I know some comics, they do almost completely white, and I think it's too much effect. So so it's, it's always this stylistic kind of consideration that how much effect do I want and how, um, because it, it ultimately it hides that which is behind to some extent. So so the question is what what is the right balance and and that balance could be different depending on which color it is in the background and how dark that is that background and how much other effects we have and 
and so on. So, so each panel is individual in that sense. So it's an um, artistic, uh, how should I say, choice, or you have to choose whatever you think it's best, looks best. All right, so th let's go back then. So we have our, this was the final result, one version of it at least, and um, so we were at our merged line art and now so our X flats line art is no longer interesting and now we just have to put that in multiply and we make the colors visible so then it should shine through So, so now it's just um, the only only thing left now is just simply, and you see here that what what is important here is that if I remove the colors, you can see that, or I should have done this perhaps with the X flats. Let's do it again here. So the correspondence that that was what I wanted to show you before so the correspondence between what I w which areas I wanted to have color areas is I think perfect now so I do get the right areas Ex I get exactly those areas I predicted I would get so you see that, so I get one area here, and one area here, and one area here, and this is a little area between his legs there, and there's a little above his hand there. and So the correspondence is perfect. And as you see here, even the even the hands there that work that this color is not the same as this color. So 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 the only thing left now is just I'm using my magic wand. I'm putting my selection on the colors layer. I'm selecting each colored area, and now I can either I can just uh, pick a color from the color picker. Let's say I want this light blue here or something. Maybe a lighter blue like this color here more perhaps. Okay, okay. And then I can just use the paint bucket and click in it and like that. So again, then I can do the same thing here with this area and paint bucket another paint bucket there and so on so it's very it's a very very simple process so then you have all the base colors in two minutes one minute without having to manually use the lasso tool or the uh, or any uh, any uh, boring uh, selection method like that. So it becomes very fluid and very uh, simple to use. And then of course you can also take the instead instead of using the uh, paint bucket, you can use the U saturation dialog box, and then. Uh, here you can colorize it then you can just as I do you can sort of maximize the saturation to see which color you are choosing here maybe you want the helmet to be green I don't really want that but just for the fun of it 
and we can increase the lightness and then we can drag down the saturation a little bit so whatever color you choose maybe it's a brown one maybe it's a red one who knows but it's your, uh, your choice right so this is the process then and um, so I think that is very um, went very well with the um, export from Krita and uh, remember now that um, yeah you had all the settings on the screen there so you can just stop the video whenever you want um, to replicate them and remember also I um, that I um, said that the the original the original X flats image that you are producing from Photoshop or from any other um, uh, I have tested that and and uh, I think that PNG is is um, PNG eight, right? And so that we're not forgetting that the PNG eight also must have no transparency because as as I said in the other video, there are times when uh, Krita just doesn't do anything if you get a transparency area inside your image so you have to be very careful when you're doing the um what is it called save for web kind of uh, when you're producing a, a png that that you uncheck the transparency um there's a checkbox in the export settings and another thing to take care of is also that you don't actually have any transparency uh, from the beginning in your image so it's always a good idea as I also said in my previous videos that that what you want to do as a last step so to speak before you export it as a PNG is that you take your X flash line art and and you uh, merge with with a, a white background uh, just to be sure that there are no transparency uh, not any pixels that are transparent and then another point here is is that when you are in Krita and your your um, conversion is uh, correct that you that you do uh, you remove the top layer because Krita uh, renames the wrong layer and so you just remove it you don't need your uh, PNG file uh, anymore so and then w what you do is you save it as a Photoshop file in PSD format and my file name uh, for th for this is I'm I'm producing an X flats done file so you can see this in my document this is X flats done that's my result coming out from Krita and for X flats is my file coming out of Photoshop before I um, toss it into Krita so those are the two files that we're talking about and then of course I'm always back to my finished panel my, my panel um, where I have all my work collected so to speak so which is this file here um, what do we have been looking at so I think that's 
all for now and I'm perhaps I didn't re I don't remember but if I forgot to mention it uh, this was a panel from 987 degrees centigrade which is a an adventure science fiction action thriller adventure which I'm working on now and this is a uh, comic book album number one out of eight albums uh, in the first season of Unlimited Danger. So, so the whole series name is Unlimited Danger and this particular album is 987 degrees centigrade. And I also have the, the back cover here and this is the uh, complete list of all the eight um, all the eight um, albums in this series so we can if you can see this better here so we have 987 degrees centigrade collision course earth the open source force the alien signal forbidden territory the power of colloidiana countdown genesis and the final battle all right, so that's all for now, and I'm hoping you have had a good time here, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.